is the Red All Over Show with me, Joe Beardsall, Josh Atherton, Alan Smith and Andy Simcox. Instant reaction. Barnsley have just lost 2-0 to Middlesbrough. Another defeat for the Reds. Um, oh, guys, uh, first thing to mention is a big thank you to our, a bit of a slight positive to start the show, a big thank you to our business supporters who have got behind Red All Over. Massive thank you and the Patreon supporters as well. Uh, Julie Hill, the latest one to, to enter our uh, supporters club. So thank you to her and thank you to um, Smart Door Solutions, Oaks Working Men's Club in Arnsley and Sunshine Day Spa, our latest business supporter who's come on board to help the show uh, grow. So massive thanks to them. Hit the like button and subscribe. Let's get straight into it, lads. Just one win in 13. We've said on um, it's like same thing. It's deja vu, isn't it, Josh? I mean, we nearly lost one. No, we lost two nil tonight. But to be honest, it could have been five or six to Borough. And they didn't. And no offense to Borough, if you're a Borough fan, well done. You've won game and fair play. You put ball back at net. But you guys didn't look absolutely up. For, you know, you didn't look on top form tonight. To be fair, it looked like we had, we could have probably troubled you if we had had a decent game, but we didn't. Just losing yeah, ball, terrible, Josh. It's, it's exactly that. I mean, Borough didn't it didn't look great, and they've still come away quite comfortably looking to tune it up and like you said it could have easily been more um it's a massive issue now performance level in there it's not like we've been unfortunate in any of these games which we've lost we've not really been unfortunate if anything we've been fortunate to stay in them we're unfortunate to get results and it's there's there's one you just need to get rid of Marcus shop there's no it, there's no bedding in period now of or oh, we've got this caveat or we've got this excuse no you've had 13 games 14 if you include the Bolt, Bolton game which were again another poor performance and nothing's changed the same problems are still there from what, what were there in the first game to what's there now and I can't I can't see any way out, out of this it's getting to, it's just getting a bit beyond a joke to be honest now it's just getting ridiculous I was going to say, because, you know, a lot of fans have been sort of saying that there needs to be a change for, for several weeks now. So it's not like it's just suddenly tonight. I know we're instant reacting, so obviously emotions are high. But, Alan, it hurt me, mate, watching tonight. It really did. It was one of them moments of, do you laugh, do you cry? Because you sat, I sat there in the second half and I couldn't hardly watch us. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to watch. I, I, I just laid there and thought, I just don't want to watch what's happening because we, we, we were so bad in that first half, apart from first 10 minutes. And, and, and credit to Honda, Mark, by the way, uh, because he got slated by, by Shop in his post-match press conference, didn't he? And today I thought he had a cracking game and I thought Gomez played well as, as well, and Brad Collins as always. But apart from that, just I don't know what to say, Al. Shop's position is now untenable. He cannot be in position as coach for Sheffield United on Sunday. He has to go tonight, tomorrow. It can't, can't last. Same again, 15 minutes on top. We played well, unbelievable football. And then all of a sudden, it comes to a door. A slip by their defender, Warwick Bamba. We didn't create it. He goes in. If we'd have had a striker and step not a door, it might have gone in. I don't know. But it's not a striker. It hit the upright. They got lucky. But then after that, it was like cutting through butter with a knife. It was so easy for them. Walnut changed shape. They put a back four in and down their flanks with no answer to, to them. They could have beat us 5-0. And yet again, we've not scored in open play. It's embarrassing. And for all Barnsley fans, I'll say it from my heart, we deserve better. We deserve much better than this. Yeah. It just hurts. It just hurts, Andy. I mean... I don't know what to say anymore, to be honest, mate. We've been saying the same things for like how many weeks now? Uh, yeah, what do we say? I think I think you said my microphone's a bit loud. What we're going to say is cut me out and just, just paste what I said last match and match before and match before. First 15 minutes, passed it about, could have scored. Even when Clark's through, I couldn't get excited. I thought, not going to score, not going to score. And we didn't. And I'm not blaming him, but we're just not going to score the confidence in there. First 10, 15 minutes, I thought, well, we'll look all right. But it's the same, same thing again. They tweak it, which is what, you know, which is what coaches do. You know, we were looking pretty decent. They tweak it. And we don't know what the heck to do. We're in that first half, as Alan said, they could have been miles away from us. We've got Fred Carno and Charlie Caroli playing for us. I know two of you won't know what I'm talking about, but Alan does. Circus acts, circus clowns, famous circus clowns. We were all over the place. And we're still persisting with the, let's pass it from Goalie to Ellick and then 
And then, you know, we get to, uh, to to Jasper Moon, who kicks it out of play. I'm not blaming any of those players, but just stop doing it. And they've been, t- you know, they've got to be told to do it. And it's just, it's just, it's just a nonsense. And you know what's going to happen. You know they're going to score. You just know it. And I, I think you're right about Hundermark. I thought Hundermark had a pretty decent game, had a good game, in fact, um, especially after being criticised. Thought he had a good game at the back, and he's, you know, we've not seen him play at the back before. I thought Gomez played all right at central midfield. Um, and when when big lad, when Alari came on, he looks somebody else. He, he looks like he could do something, but he can't do it on his own. And, you know, we got players that, that weren't at the races today and, and didn't know where they were going or anything. It's just the same thing again. And as Alan said, surely to goodness, surely now it's untenable. Um, and from what I've been reading, you know, there's a whole host of things from what I've been, I, I don't know, I only saw it on television, just going down the tunnel. You know, there's people gone, people paid their money and travelled all that way. I, I appreciate sometimes not going over to get abuse. I understand that. But you can at least take, go towards and applaud straight down the tunnel. It's it's just shockingly poor. All of it's shockingly poor. It's it's not the end of the week. That's the worst bit. I was going to say it's it's another final week, but we've got another game to go this week. There's there's still stuff this week going to be happening, you know. And it's just it's just the same thing again. And I've told you before, it's a sign of insanity. Keep doing the same thing and hoping for a different outcome. And how many times are we going to ask for a different outcome, hope for a different outcome that never comes? It's, but I'm it's, happy tonight, lads. I predicted 2-0 to Yeah, me and happy. you both, Al. I've me. got to get in, Andy. At least there's a smile on his face. Not the right one, but we've got we've got more points than what the Reds have. How sad is it, Al? How sad <laughs> is it that we come close from a corner? You know, if we and I'm thinking... Don't score. I predicted 2-0. Don't score an hour in injury time and spoil it for me. And that's basically because I knew we weren't going to get a second one. It's it's just it's just it's awful it's when that's all we've got to look forward to, isn't it? That's all we've got to look forward to is prediction <laughs> competition. Yeah, Not what's just, happening on the field of play, the predict red all over prediction competition. Hey it's lads, fun. think you said lucky. At least you did well with that. I went for it last show, one nil to Borough. And then this morning, something hit me and I just went, oh, no, I've changed my mind. I think Barnsley are going to win. You know when you get that little bit of hope, a little bit of belief? So I messaged no. Andy. I put it on Twitter. I was like, Andy, change my score, mate. I've decided I'm going to, you know, it was work cut-off point. I said, just change my score. I'm going 2-1 Barnsley. And when Clark Adore goes through, I'm thinking, hey, up, this is it. He gets his first goal, first 10 minutes. We're going to go on and win this game. <laughs> Honestly, I nearly burst out crying when he missed that chance. I, mean, I, mean, I sat there tonight and I'm genuinely, I'm laughing, but I've genuinely felt like crying all night because it was so horrible to watch. I, I watched it with my brother. Yeah, at least you weren't with my brother watching it. I tell you what, it didn't make it better having to sit with my brother watching it because he, he, he's not happy. Let, let me tell you, from, from our group, I'll just read you this out, Joe, and then we can, I know Joe, Josh needs to talk about it. Is this from Red All Over Sports Group, yeah? Yeah, uh, Craig Jones has said, I've sent you this, Andy, please say this. We looked poor defensively and toothless in attack. We've lost 2 0 to the most wasteful side I've seen in a while. Anyone else would have had 5 or 6. Worst of all, everything that we are thinking at home is what the players are also thinking. You can tell with their body language. The second borough goal, our players knew we had lost. All confidence, hope, determination, and fight sucked out of them. On and off the field, no leader to drag us through these tough times. And you know that's that's from a lad that's supported for a long while, and it's you know it's says it all really. It's such a shame. Let us know Isn't what you think, Reds. As always, get into the comments. Tell us what you're thinking. A uh, new little feature I'm trying out just for this show. You know, we like to try new things, so let us know whether you like it. Uh, it's going to be fun tonight. Rate the performance out of ten. There you go. Enjoy that one, <laughs> um, Josh. In all seriousness, mate, though, it's gone on and it's gone on and it's gone on and we're sick of talking about it now. We all know what we want. We want to see a change. We've all said that that's, that's the only way we can see ourselves getting out of this situation. We are seriously now at risk of relegation if we do not make a change, I think is, is fair to say. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I said it on last show, Stendhal got sacked before this. Well, he got sacked after 12 games and we are now worse off than we were that season. We are now adrift of safety. If we win this next game, we're not guaranteed to come out of 
the relegation zone, uh, depending on what other teams around us do. And so that now, by proxy, puts us in a relegation bat- battle, which I'm not surprised. I've not absolutely zero of this blame or accountability goes towards the players, by the way. Um, I think they're doing exactly what they've been told by shop and it's not working. And the, the leadership's just not there from, from shop on the sidelines. And 100% of the blame for the performances, from my perspective, is 100% on shop's shoulders. Um, then there's just a number of things which he's done, which they've not rubbed fans up the right, the, the right way. And he's just not got players playing to the levels which we know they can. And I think that's it's a massive problem. It's a massive issue. I mean, you look at the fact that we've got Jordan Williams playing centre-half tonight. We've got we've had Jasper in the last couple of games. I feel extremely sorry for him because I think he's been thrown under the bus massively by shop. He's not been eased in at all. And it's things like that that I don't know some ways being so pedant, so persistent with uh, playing free at the back. If you've not got free set, free um, fresh, se- senior-level professionals Centre backs don't play three at the back. Go four at the back. It's not. It's not. It's not an hard thing to fix. Go four at the back. Put Gomez Olsen instead, and you basically got five at the back. It's things like that. I don't understand it. That is so naive and so arrogant in my eyes that it's now cost us. I don't even know how many points it's cost us by him being so persistent on playing three at the back and playing. Jasper Moon consistently. He, he needs to, he needs taken out the fact that the firing line because he's not he's not at the best of times, and I think he's been hung out to dry, especially in the position he's in because the, the amount of games where we've been torn in between centre halves and wing backs in that half space there, the amount of times teams have attacked there and it has made either left or right centre back look poor is unbelievable, and we've done nothing about it. It started before the Stoke game, and it's still happening. And nothing, there's nothing to do to address it. There's, we're playing anybody at, cent, at centre back, so we can sh- so we can shoe on a three at the back in. I don't <laughs> just don't get it all. Yeah, and we aren't de- Derby. Sorry, lads, we aren't Derby losing them twelve points tonight. We'd be foot at table. That's the sad thing. We'd be holding the rest of the championship up. I just four- feel sorry for a lot of players. I just genuinely feel sorry. Like you said, Jasper Moon, just not managed right. Just you know, it's. it's it, it, the young lads has been chucked straight in the deep end, not brought in like you said last year, Josh, for twenty minutes here and there to to, to develop himself and, and and get used to the championship, and then eventually become similar to Toby Civic, who went to you know he's become a top player because he was managed right. I think he had those oh, yeah. thirty minutes, it's and then look, a, at, look at Ramal Palmer as well between Struber and Valerian. They both handled him perfectly. Struber brought 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 him into sides from seemingly nowhere. He were in for forty five minutes, sixty minutes, then come off and replace him with. Kenny Dougal at the time and then Valerian came in. We'll have Palmer on for 60, 60 minutes or so and then he'll come off and it worked. And now now look at him. Like I think he's he's a good option in his rotation of central midfielders. He's now a fully fledged championship midfielder for me. And I don't understand why Michael Shop doesn't do these things. Like it there's no there's no loss of pride by copying what someone's done before. Like, when he's come in, why is he not copied what Valerian did? You've seen the players, you've seen the strengths. Do what happened last season. If it didn't work, then go to your style. Why come and change it, put us bottom on the table and not do anything about it? I don't understand it. Yeah. Well, just to let you know, Reds, I am currently down, uh, all being well, to um, go and uh, chat with the CEO on Friday, um, along with the rest of the media. Uh, mm. So if you have got any questions, by all means, stick them in the uh, in the comments, and we'll you know I'll do my best to to take them under consideration. Um, uh, yeah, on, on Friday and maybe ask a few questions. Um, I'm going to ask you again, guys. Is Marcus Shop going to be out of a job tomorrow morning, or is he still going to be here for Sheffield United? Because it is worrying. Because I tell you what, Borough didn't look that. As I've said, no offense, Borough fans, but I think you've admitted it yourself. When we, we had Dana on the um, and on the show um, doing the opposition view. And she was brilliant. And she said that, you know, we haven't been at his best this season. I think you could admit you probably weren't at your best tonight, but still did the job. Um, if we play like that against Sheffield United, Andy, they're putting five or six pastors, I think, to be honest. We won't have to try hard. Well, they've got some finishers, you know. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say, Joe. It's, again, for the second foot, well, for more than two matches, but certainly for two matches running, we played against sides that have not been better than us when we're playing half decently, just ordinary sides, and that's no disrespect to either Reading or to uh, or to these tonight at, at Middlesbrough. But we just shoot ourselves in the foot and we, we, we truly don't know where we're going and where we are. The players looked as dejected as we are. 
And I, I, I just think they're wandering around totally lost. And, you know, we're still persisting with this pass it to the fullback and then put us, you know, pass it, I mean, pass it to the centre half, then pass it back to the goalie. And it's easy, it's easy to deal with. Um, the bright spark, and, you know, I, I don't know how it's gone on before the bright spark as Ulari. You know, the you first five or six touches were all good. Sorry, what the heck's happening here? Oh, will you turn off your phone, mate? You're muted. It's Neil and Jed from Derby. Oh, dear me. Hold on. Uh, Alan, turn the phone off. We're trying to talk. <laughs> you can't get staff these days, can you, Reds? He's just telling. He's just always saying, yeah, we'll see what happens with Larry. You can't judge him like we, you know, with DK. I thought he played well, Joe. Yeah, yeah he played well. But, the first you know. fact, the first four touches he had, three of them, he found a Barnsley player straight away. And the other one, he put a good tackle in. You know, we've not been tackling. He put a good tackle in. He's looked all, he looked all right. I don't think he can be the answer. He's only just, you know, he's only just come. He's not played much, but he looked all right. But well, you know, it's yeah. it's coming in a different. It's coming in a different. And I, you know, I thought his second looked all right at times, but you know, they, they've got to be able to play together. And um, the way it's going, it's just looking. You know, we, we're just looking. We're looking like little kids. You know, I, I'm not going to name players, but there were, well, there were players out on the left, both in defence and up. And uh, you know, midfield and up front look like kids, just look like kids, and it's not fair on them. It's just not fair expecting something that's currently beyond the capabilities. It's not right. Yeah, I mean, I think that just looking at our Red All Over Supporters uh, group, if you want to join, by the way, uh, you can support us on uh, Patreon forward slash Red All Over and join the supporters group. Uh, really appreciate your support. Um, like um, Thomas Webster, who's one of our regulars, sit with him in the Ponty. He said, uh, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but he said that he's glad he went out in town tonight instead of watching. And and it makes me sad that that's the case because I know he's a massive fan and he watches, watches you know, all the games just as we do. But it's getting to that point of if something doesn't change, fans are getting to the point of you can't get angry about it for, forever, can you? You just start, you, you care just goes, doesn't it? And that's the saddest part. I, I hate that. I can't stand it that when, you know, when it gets to that point where you're just like, well, I've got I just can't care about it because it hurt me. Lads. I've got General Neil in Derby here coming on and singing, we want shot out, we want shot out, we want shot out, we want shot out. They're in Derby and even wanting shot out. What's happening? The sad bit, Joe, and I think you've alluded to it, the sad bit is that we can get related at times, we can get really saddened and angry and frustrated at times. The thing that kills you is apathy. If we're indifferent, that's where a football club, it, it all goes wrong for a football when people just become apathetic to it, because they just think, well, who cares? Who cares? And that, that, you know, four, nearly five months on, and, you know, from ecstasy, nearly, we nearly did it, to complete apathy is an awful thing to be witnessing. Yeah. I'm glad Alan's having fun anyway. He seems to be only one. Uh, having a conversation mid-show, Al. Big words about this. Be sacking the up. Oh, have a bacon morning. sandwich. I, I have a bacon you know, sandwich you instead. Out. What about me when you eat bacon sandwiches? Hey, oh, the well, man from Derby on talking about football. Well, yeah, actually, they don't talk about football because there's no football to talk about, is the lads? Alan, <laughs> Alan, don't you be going about my bacon butties last show? That they'll be getting. You'll not be the only one getting sacked it morning if you keep this. If they keep this up. <laughs> um, right to finish off. I just want to say, like, I know it's obviously deflated and some of the fans have commented, I know you guys have commented and said, usually we're all happy and, you know, trying to keep a laugh. And we'll still try to do that, even while we're playing rubbish. But it can turn around. It can. Not necessarily under Marcus shop. Can I just clarify before I get a million comments and loads of dislikes on the show? But it, it's a long season, Josh. We've seen it many times before where we've had an absolute stinker of a start. Maybe not as bad as this, but pretty bad. And we've managed to turn it around. So do you think if they were to get rid of shop and get a new gaffer in, there's a there's a chance we will be able to get out of this mess? Yeah, fair point me. On it way, you're going out of this mess. Paul Conway, Jen Lee, whoever's listening, pick me. I'll sort it out. At least I've got a bit of passion about club. You're gonna get you're gonna get some passion and leadership on that sideline. I'm I'm accepting nothing but hundred percent. And I've got some. I've got. I've got my ta tactics whiteboard. It's on order from Amazon. 
I tell you what, that tactics white board's been on order from Amazon for ages. I don't know where you ordered it, mate. They're usually quite good for delivery. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I ain't got next day. I I ain't got next day in Manchester. Not Amazon Prime. Not in Manchester. I've got me half Andy, I've got me half a K shirt on. I can see it out. Half a K. Yeah. Come on, we need passion. We need lads who believe in our football. And that's what we ain't got. I'll Sorry. put a word in for you at CEO on Friday, Josh, when I meet him. I'll say, I've got a guy. I'll show him a few at shows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, either that or if someone watching wants to start a uh, change.org uh, petition for me to become manager, either will do. Don't encourage we'll him. You know they actually will. Y'all we'll, get it will, through you? Parliament. Oh, we'll get it passed through Parliament and then we'll see what club says about it. Film, film chief executive's reaction, Joe. Because that, that'll be worth, be worth watching him laugh. It'll be like watching... It'll be like watching Laughing Policeman on Cleethorpe's Beach. Only way I'm going to get anybody to laugh this week, anyway. Great, yeah. Reds, that's been Instant Reaction. As always, we love your comments. So tell us what you think. If you if we've missed out that you think that, you know, you want to you want to highlight and we can maybe discuss it next time. And we'd love to just have a chat with you as well in the comments. So get them in there. Hit the like button. I know it's horrible when we lose, but we appreciate your support for the show as always. And we will catch you later in the week uh, to preview the Sheffield United game on Sunday. And like I said, all being well, should be chatting to Barnsley's CEO uh, on Friday, so we should have some content coming out on the back of that, providing everything goes smoothly with that. The reason I'm saying that is because, obviously, we don't know what's happening with the gaffer at the minute, so things can get thrown into the works. Uh, but, yeah. I'll, uh, so, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you a message if someone's been in touch, Joe. If I can, <laughs> can give you an heads up. I I've got any... Remember, lads, yeah, when it sport. turned Thanks, around mate. last time, it turned around for Eckingbottom after we drew with Sheffield United and we went right up to playoffs. And Lee Johnson, Lee Johnson. Ecky weren't in charge at that point. But yes. Okay. I, know, I know what you mean, Al. Don't take it from him, Al. <laughs> Go on, Al. Don't take it from him. I'm Go right on, on that, Anna. Lee Johnson. You are right, but still don't take it, Al. He can't talk to you like that. Don't you know who you are, Alan? It's time know. for bed. I've had enough. You I've see, had enough. Alan, if you were... That's our bedtime, this, Al. Isn't Alan, it, Andy? If you weren't so concentrated on your conversation on your phone while we were doing show, you might you might have remembered that. Excuse fact, me, mate. excuse me, yeah. Joe. I can move. Right, Joe. I can, I can right, move. Joe. Only thing you can do, Smithy. Only thing you can multitask with beards all is we have bloody bacon butty. Hey, no, hey, I heard that language. I know we're angry. It's I know it's after the sh- it's after the. It's not after the show. He's still running. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before Al starts bl- bl- blasting out any more expletives for you young viewers, never say that word. Be, be a good one, and we're sorry sorry for his, his naughty word. We're going to have to go, because Al needs to go to bed, and Andy needs to sweat his stand out, because he's been he played 20 minutes with it before we came on, and it's uh, very loud, so we'll let him sweat oh, sure. we'll see you later. Sure. <laughs> see you later, Reds.